STI Duty 150 flight. Riders Range started the affordable 1911 comparison series looking at guns between $400 and $1,600. Now if you say $1,600 is not affordable, for some it may not be, check out our website where we explain how we arrived at uh, that price range for affordability. So to kick off the 9mm full size part of the comparison series, we're going to look at an entry level gun that can be had for around the $400 bracket. And we're going to put that side by side with a gun at the top of the line, uh, price range uh, wise, that when it was still available from the factory had a catalog price of about $1,500. So the question is whether or not that $1,500 gun is really that much better than the $400 gun. Now better is subjective. Riders Range will lay out the points and at the end you get to make the decision. So stick around and see what Riders Range thinks of both the Rock Island Armory 9mm full size and the STI Duty One Light 5.0 full size 9mm. As I said, both of these guns are full size 9mm. Uh, there are similarities and there are differences, obviously the price being one of the big differences. But let's look at some of the similarities, um, or some of the contrast first. Start with a, a $400 gun, Rock Island Armory. This is your uh, basic Rock series. Uh, this particular one is a few years old and you can tell that by the uh, large uh, writing on the side of the, the slide. Now they just have a, a, a small logo toward the back. Uh, but the, the features are pretty much the same. And we'll start looking at, uh, well, we'll look at the sights. We'll start right at the top of the slide. This has your basic Dawson type uh, rear notch sight. It is drift adjustable for windage. Front sight though is a fiber optic. This one's a little bit faded but it's a green fiber optic. And these sights are nice in that there's a real nice contrast in the width between the front and the rear sight. So it, it makes it very shootable and uh, theoretically very accurate. The STI has high knee sights and they're serrated uh, plain black rear, plain black front and for target accuracy uh, I like black sights and again there's a, uh, a fair uh, light definition between the uh, the front and the rear sight if I can get it straight in the camera there there we go you can easily see the light on each side of that front sight so these high knee sights are really nice and they are the ledge design so if you ever have to cock it on a boot or a table or a belt or whatever uh, you've got the uh, the ridge there to cock it on and speaking of cocking cocking serrations the you know, basic GI style vertical serrations on the Rock Island Armory, nothing fancy about it. No front cocking serrations. Of course the STI has uh, cocking serrations on the front so that you can do your press check. And it has their own version of uh, uh, that you see on the Duty 1 line with the rear cocking serrations. Some people like them, some people don't like them. Slides themselves are, are very well fitted. There's there's virtually no play on this Rock Island. Uh, it, it's not fitted as nicely as, uh, as a custom, but even everything here on the back does match fairly well. There's not a lot of stuff sticking out there, not a lot of rough edges. STI, uh, again, very, very nicely fitted, um, much much smoother than the, than, than the Rock Island, but they're both very functional. Both of these guns have skeletonized hammers, a little different style on them. Both have skeletonized triggers, um, but there, there is a significant difference in these triggers, not just in how they look, but in how they're built. STI has a plastic faced trigger. Now some people say that's a turn off in a $1500 gun. I've got several STIs with plastic triggers, never had a problem with them. Grip is another thing. The uh, Rock Island Armory has checkering on the back. The STI has a, a, a very aggressive um, uh, protrusion. It's not really a stippling pattern. It's actually a bunch of bumps on the back of the mainspring housing. Uh, very, very grippy. 
the grips themselves are a contrast. The Rock Island comes in just plain smooth wood. The STI does come with uh, uh, grips that have the same type of texture that you get on the back or the mainstream mainspring, the same kind of texture you get on the mainspring housing. And on the front, there's a difference. How I will mention that the front strap on a normal Rock Island is smooth, but this particular one I've added black skateboard tape to give me some traction because I just I'm not a big fan of the uh, of the smooth front grips. The um, STI does have the same kind of treatment on the front as it has on the back, and it's very very grippy texture. They both have uh, speed bumps or memory bumps on the uh, uh, on the uh, beaver tail uh, grip safety. Uh, and speaking of safeties. STI is single-sided, Rock Island Armory is ambidextrous, right and left for no additional cost. And in case you were asking, both of them do have full-length full length guide rods. Triggers are, uh, and we started talking about the trigger and how they're made, but they are a little bit different in uh, function too. Not a lot, but, uh, but enough to, uh, uh, to be able to point out. The by the way, these guns have all been safety inspected and they are empty. The trigger on the STI weighs in at a consistent three and a half pounds. There's very little take up on it. There's no vertical uh, play. So it's a well fitted trigger and no creep. Very, very clean let off, immediate stop, three and a half pounds all day long. Reset is very short. Still got that little bit of take up and a nice, nice trigger. Rock Island Armory, this gun is made in the Philippines, and you think a $400 gun is, is cheap, but again, you've got very little vertical play in the trigger. There is some, more so than the, than the STI, certainly, but it's still not a lot. There's a little bit of take up, but not objectionable. The trigger is a little shorter than the STI, but not a lot. And it does have a little bit of grit and it has a consistent break at five pounds. Nice short reset. Just a little bit of creep, but not much, and a five pound let off. So, all in all, very nice trigger on the Rock Island. Not quite as nice as, uh, as it is on the STI. And we mentioned that the STI is the Duty One 5.0 and it is the duty one light it doesn't say that on the uh, on the gun but it is light because it has an alloy frame one of the few full-size guns that uh, come out with an alloy frame and there is a difference in weight now the rock island is pretty typical of your full-size 1911s and actually the nine millimeter because the diameter of the barrel is going to be a little heavier than the 45. the rock island nine millimeter fully loaded 10 rounds Nine in the magazine, one for the chamber is 44.7 ounces. The STI being an alloy frame still with the 10 rounds is 38 ounces on the button. So significant weight difference between the two, but that doesn't translate into any difficulty in shooting it. Of course, we're only talking a nine millimeter here, but uh, shooting the two guns, uh, actually I kind of enjoy shooting the, nine, the, uh, the Rock Island a little bit better. Accuracy is, uh, is always a question on these. The, uh, Rock Island um, is, it shoots high and it does not shoot quite as well as I would like to see. On the other hand, it's a $400 gun. Um, but I have a couple other $400 guns that probably shoot maybe a little bit better than that. Does it shoot as well as a $400 polymer frame gun? Well, that's all subjective. But as far as the accuracy of the Rock Island, it's not quite what I would hope it, it would be, but it's certainly adequate to get the job done. You can see on the 20, uh, excuse me, on the 15 yard uh, accuracy target, it does shoot high. It doesn't group uh, quite as tight as some others, uh, but it does in fact ring steel at 50 yards. Uh, you have to work at it, but again, the, the uh, sights on this make it fairly easy to get that sight definition. So the accuracy on the STI is, uh, is decent. Um, it shoots just a little bit low, and uh, this uh, the sight's been just a little higher on the STI Duty One. I would have kept all of the shots in a in the three-inch circle at 15 yards. I did have uh, one uh, flyer from the group a little bit high right, but everything else was really uh, uh, within less than a three-inch group. So I'm I'm happy with it, although it's, uh, it could shoot just a little bit higher. But these sights don't adjust for uh, for elevation; uh, only drift adjustable for windage. 
But again, it'll ring steel at 50 yards as long as I do my part, and I love the way this particular gun shoots. Now, you mentioned that the STI is not available in the catalog anymore. Uh, in fact, uh, they dropped their single stack line for uh, a couple of years, just recently came back out with it, uh, with the Staccato C being their first uh, single stack in, in a while. And actually, Riders Range did a review on the Staccato C a while back. I'll put a link in the description to that video, and that is a wonderful shooting little gun. Actually, the, the light model, the alloy frame, was only in the catalog for uh, maybe two years at the most. And if I remember right, it was about a $1,500 gun. I've done some internet search for it. I can't find any lights for sale right now. If you do find a Duty One light, uh, snatch it up. I found this one uh, not that long ago, new in the box, and got it for a, a very, very nice price, uh, significantly less than, than the $1,500. So if you can find one, uh, grab it. It's a, I think it's, a, it's definitely a worthwhile gun, especially if you can find one of these for around $1,000 or $1,100. Uh, Rock Island, on the other hand, uh, the Rock series has a uh, manufacturer suggested retail price of $594. You can find them all day long for around $450 plus uh, new in the box, uh, and you can find them used for uh, around the $400 mark, which is what I paid for this one. So, a $400 1911 is still a very workable gun. So, what do I like and not like about these guns? We'll start with the uh, the STI. It, it's, it's a very well-made gun. Uh, the trigger at three and a half pounds with uh, with no creep is very very nice on it. Um, it has lots of grip all the way around uh, front, uh, sides, and back. Um, you may not like the looks of the serrations on the slide, but uh, again, they, they do work and uh, it does add a little different flair to the to the gun. I didn't mention that the STI does have a rail on it and if you like to hang things off the bottom of your gun a rail is a good thing on the other hand if you want to fit into uh, conventional 1911 holsters the rail is a non-starter for that the uh, again with a good the uh, STI is accurate it shoots just a hair low but when I do my part the gun definitely does its part I do and I do like those high knee sights uh, as to not so good, well, and they're no longer made. Some people will say the plastic trigger face is not so good, and other people will say that the, the uh, steep price when you do find them is also not so good. The Rock Island Armory, on the other hand, uh, on the top of the good list is the price, particularly the price for the features. Uh, spending uh, $450 for a new gun that has everything that this 1911 has on it is, uh, is a very good value. These guns are reliable. Uh, this particular gun, again, I've got close to a thousand rounds to the Rock Island, and uh, I bought it pre-owned, and I haven't had any issues at all with it. Before I get into the not so good, let's look at fair. The uh, the trigger is fair. Oh, one more good on it that I uh, didn't mention is the fiber optic front sight. Uh, if you like fiber optic, it does jump out at you, and the sights in general, the Dawson type sights on this are, are very nice. Uh, fair again for accuracy. It does shoot high. It doesn't group as nice as I would like, but it will hit steel at, at 50 yards. Not so good. Well, again, it's made the Philippines, not the United States of America, and it doesn't come with the front strap checkering. So, in the end, the Rock Island Armory uh, does prove that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a decent gun. Uh, is it a quality of an STI? Well, no, I didn't expect that going into this. It's, a, again, a $450 gun versus a $1,500 gun. The STI is, is pricey, uh, but very nicely made. But is it worth three to four times as much as a Rock Island? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that because it's all going to be subjective based on what you like, what you can afford. And quite frankly, if the only gun that I had was the Rock Island Armory 9mm uh, 1911, you know, it's a decent gun, uh, it does what it needs to do, and for the difference between the price of the two guns, you can buy a lot of ammo and do a lot of practicing. Hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, give us a thumbs up. Uh, I certainly appreciate comments, and if you'd rather not comment on the YouTube channel, send comments to info at ridersrange.com, and uh, we'll take those into consideration also. Please visit uh, ridersrange.com for the complete playlist of everything coming up in all of our videos in the future. Uh, links to the videos, a blog with uh, some of our thoughts on, on other ideas. We also have uh, videos that are not in the 1911 series, so please check those out at ridersrange.com. Once again, I want to thank you for visiting Riders Range. And let's see how this does at 25 yards. We'll start out with the silhouette. 
Yeah, it is still shooting a little bit low. Let's try the 12 inch. Okay, that works. Let's try an 8. And another 8. Oh, that was me.